Well, if you watched the ditch banging debacle video, you saw Dennis's clutch get stuck. Today we're going to solve it. We'll show you how we're going to fix it in a much improved manner. Well, there you can see the clutch is still stuck. You can tell because of the way that it is. That's pretty common on these old closed face primaries. And uh, we got a really good solution this time. Uh, our friend Michael brought over uh, an open face out of a later model sled. So uh, we're gonna blast this one off and uh, kind of compare the two and show you how to tell that you have the right clutch. All right, well, Dennis's hole, and I have my finger through right here, well, that didn't sound good at all. Uh, the hole in the belly pan that I have my finger through didn't even come close to lining up with the clutch bolt. So we just took the uh, three motor mount bolts off and uh, lifted up the motor a little bit. And now we'll grab the puller and she'll be right off. All right, always put some anti-seize on your clutch puller. Oh, that wasn't difficult at all. Nice. Came right off. So, uh, Dennis is TX340, and in fact, nearly every Polaris from the 70s with the Fuji motor has this long crank stub. And uh, as you might guess, if you put on a normal 30 taper clutch, it's going to stick way far out. So, what you need is a 32 millimeter taper clutch. They're both a 1 in 10 taper, so uh, it matches up pretty good. All right, here's the clutch Michael brought over, and uh, we're going to show you the determining factor in whether this clutch works or doesn't work, and that's the, the big end of the taper. What size is it? So if we get a caliper up there and we catch it just inboard of the... Uh, just inboard of the edge, 31.9 millimeters. Come over here, and it's the same. So it's uh, it's exactly the same, and the angle of the taper is exactly the same. So the only thing we got to do to modify this clutch to work, well, you can see the normal puller works on that one. We'd have to get a different puller for this one, but we're just going to drill out the hole. So if you can see. It's got a rather small hole in there. We're just going to chuck her in the lathe and drill her out. Um, that's it. Yeah, that's, that's the only modification we're going to do on this. Um, the application for this is uh, basically any uh, Liberty Twin new enough to have fuel injection. For sure anything 2010 or newer. Uh, Michael said this came off an 07 Dragon. It would have been a 600. So... Uh, there you go. It's just a pretty normal newer Polaris clutch. Just needs a slight modification, which we'll show you in a second. All right, we're just checking her up in the collet chuck. That's a Jacobs Rubber Flex collet chuck if you've never seen one before. And I'm going to grab my. 5 eighths or do I want an 11 sixteenths for this? That's a three quarter. That's too big. That's too right. big. I'm going to grab my drill bit. I'll be right back. All right. So once again, we're just drilling this out so that it'll use a normal clutch puller. That's that. There we go. All I did was give it that. The taper's locked on. So, uh, good to go. Let's dress it out with some weights and, uh, and a spring and make her work. Woohoo! So I found a kit 
on eBay a couple months back when I thought about doing this and got lucky and found some new old stock 1044s. And? And bought a Blue Spring right off of Players.com. So uh, that's what we're going to start with for calibration and yeah. see where it goes from there. They had a few others in that kit that I bought from some guy, but... I think the 1048s are wishful thinking. All right, we're doing a little teardown on the old clutch, and look at all the dirt and debris. That's common for these things. They're horrible for wear, and they're hard to rebuild. Uh, the calibration that was in it was some B weights, and uh, believe it or not, a modern gold spring. But uh, the, the, the teardown just reveals that the reason it was sticking is it's just a worn out piece of junk. Yeah, that's a lot of metal filings <laughs> coming out of there. She's pretty much junk. All right, Dennis continued a little investigation. What else we got? So this, this uh, weight's worn just all on one side. It looks like what probably happened oh, is geez. it was caught up in the, in the roller. Yeah, that thing is junk. And, and then just would wedge. Wedge it on the way back. Wedge be stuck. Yeah, that's a good 16th of an inch ledge there. Yeah, and it's got a taper to it, so that's probably how it was locking. That's all those shavings we just dumped out. Yeah. Junk, and, junk, yeah. junk, junk. All right, really important point when you're working on these clutches. There's an X on the cover and an X on the spider. And uh, you have to match those up or your clutch won't be in balance. All right. There we go. Run them down even. All right, so I got everything we need to put the clutch on now. So we got this aluminum sleeve that I had to cut off, up, I don't know, about half, three-eighths of an inch. And uh, the other reason we, we drilled out the clutch is so you can use this aluminum sleeve. It's basically the same size as the end of the puller. And uh, the aluminum sleeve is, you know, fairly good fit on the bolt as well as uh, a good fit um, in the clutch. So what it does is it keeps the bolt from whipping. I started using these in the 90s. This is an actual player's part. And uh, note that I cut the end that doesn't have the holes. These holes are so you can get a little pick in there and pull it out later if it gets stuck. Sometimes they kind of wedge into the threads a little. So, throw our sleeve in, and I'll show you how much thread engagement we got. Well, it's not quite that much because we got three O-rings. So, our thread engagement's just about where it used to be. And then, to keep the sleeve from bouncing around in there, we've got these big fat O-rings. And, uh, you know, you just put them in, and it should be just a little proud, like that. So, that we got like a half a diameter of an O-ring out that hole. And that's it. We got plenty of thread engagement. Uh, I couldn't find a top hat, but that's fine. We don't need a top hat. And uh, that's that. We're just going to lock her down and uh, give her a test run. All right, I'm going to go ahead and torque the clutch bolt right now. I got this handy clutch puller that my buddy Greg gave me years ago. I think he bought 10 of them at a swap meet for 10 bucks and handed them out to his friends. Greg's like that. Good dude. Um... At any rate, I don't torque these real tight. The taper is what holds it. The bolt just keeps it on the taper, but the taper is what's transferring the torque. So I am literally just going by hand. And that's enough. That'll keep your clutch on. I've never torqued one tighter than that. Well, I have, and it led to problems, and I was told not to do that. So that's how tight I've been torquing them for at least 15 years now. All right, we're going to check the alignment. We haven't touched the secondary yet. We just threw this clutch on, and it looks like we need to add in uh, about a shim. Really, just about one shim. So uh, we'll do that quick. All right, so uh, we'll show you how to work on your secondary quick. So just give it a little spin and uh, push down on the helix. Should just slide free. And then take off your snap ring and your helix should come up. Sometimes that washer will get caught in the snap ring groove. Sometimes you gotta use the uh, 
the helix to push it up. All right, I'm gonna say that's the uh, rust colored spring. <laughs> All right, well, we're just gonna open up these holes in the helix just slightly. This is just a 316 drill bit. We're not making them any deeper. Just making them a little bigger so they accept the spring better. So that's just a newer spring? Yeah, it's just a bigger diameter than it was no, designed for. Right now she goes right in. And uh, we'll just hit the same thing in here. Actually, we're going to take it out and take it apart so that we don't have any chips in there. It looks like we need to dump it out anyways. Yeah. All right, so we're back here at the secondary and... Uh, Looking at the springs, so the uh, the rust color spring came out, has some traces of white on it, but I'm not sure if that's white paint or what. Typically I find a red spring in there, not as shiny and new looking as this one. Um, I kind of want to upgrade it. There's this plain silver, it's a really fat wire, it's really stiff. And then there's this silver with the blue stripe, which is kind of between the stock red and the silver. So uh, I did grab the old handy old drill bit. And I drilled out all the holes, including the one in the uh, movable sheet, the 3 sixteenths, just so I could fit a newer spring in there. And it uh, goes right in. Fits real nice. I didn't make those holes any deeper. So uh, the first thing we got to do is get the helix key out. Yep, we'll need that in a second. Really soon we'll probably need that. Um, where's the washer? There's the washer. All right, we're locked in. And now we're gonna wind it past that tower. Hang on just a second. Yep. Wash it. Oh, you know what? I didn't get the helix key started first. You do wanna start the helix key before you start winding things. Tap her down. There you go. Yeah, we'll give her a good shove. All right, helix keys in. I'm gonna put this washer in there right now too. Oh. Mm, pop, baby. Gotta wind her a little tighter. Man, that is still pretty tight for this sled. Think Come back a uh, first hole. I think we're gonna go back to the red. No, first hole won't even matter that much. All right. Where'd my helix key go? All right, now we're gonna give her a wind. Oh, there, that's closer. Go ahead and stick that in there. All right, that feels better. That's uh, a little stiffer than it was with the uh, rust colored spring, but it's not obscenely stiffer. It should help with belt pressure. So we're going to get some brake cleaner and clean my greasy fingerprints off this clutch before we put it in. Yes, here we are. All right, so the alignment was real close. Took one thin spacer. Now, I always set these up with some float, about a sixteenth of an inch. And uh, you can see that it's in the float range. It's perfect alignment. The belt will take care of the rest.
quick weight change to help with that over grabbing. So I got this little setup, but this thing isn't working. It just doesn't fit over that big washer like it should. So uh, we're just going to sub in an inch and a quarter wrench right there. And uh, be careful that that doesn't fall off while we're rotating things. I'll probably reposition it every time. And uh, all you really got to know is do that, take the pressure off of the weight, and then change it. Put that one over there so we don't mix it up. Got some nice 10 MWs here. They'll be just peachy. That extra couple grams should uh, take us down, you know, 250 to 400 RPM, which ought to put us right about where we want to be. All right, test run on Dennis's sled. Get your Greg revving up in the background, getting ready for a little, little short ride. on its side each way to get the skis up on top. Keep going. Keep going. Alright. I'll try to drive her out. I got you pointed out. You two got the same idea. Tip her up on one side and then the other. I got this key tip up. So. Ah, you're gonna have to tip it that way. Ski tip over there. 
Oh, that's a million miles down, Greg. Oh, tip oh, the whole sled. Easier said than done. There we go. I got it. Yeah. Punch my foot through the uh, to the water. Yeah. That's why I was struggling to get out from from in front of you. My boot was stuck. That was a little brutal there, boys. <laughs> that was a little brutal. Like, God damn, it was fun. It was great. <laughs> All right, guys, it's been a great day. Dennis, how's your clutch? Love it, it hooks up and just rips. Keeps Greg, going. so I kept running. Thanks for inviting us out. And uh, times. I gotta say, I love the race around the field at the end. Oh, that was fun. Got a little lean. You, you got a little lean. Jets. I kind of won by default there, I think. Yeah. I just leaned. 
I yeah. don't get him lean. I just lean. <laughs> well, it's a pretty good snow right now, don't we? Yeah, awesome. Yeah. So I want to say thanks to the patrons and uh, everybody else. Hit subscribe, like, and share. And, uh, get out on the trails. Get out on the trails. We'll see you on the trails. Oh.